I'm originally from Mexico and I've been living in the United States now for 20 years uh, and I have worked at King State College at the same time. And now I teach about uh, several issues regarding uh, gender identities and issues of uh, Latinos and Latinas in the United States. In this project, I'm exploring uh, how to transform long narratives uh, or essays of essays, um, essays that I have written, but also about materials that I teach and how to transform them in shorter narratives, but more than the shorter, um, in a more multimedia presentation, uh, because I think that multimedia offers um, other kind of opportunities to readers and viewers uh, to approach the content of topics that are important to me. I was approached by Professor Patricia Petroza Gonzalez. Uh, we know each other for like three years now. Uh, since we both belong from different countries, we are we share this common experience of being international people uh, in this campus. So we have represented our culture, our dances in different events on campus and also in Greater Keene community. And we have also received Outstanding Women of New Hampshire Award with two other recipients in 2018. So um, that's how we knew each other and she uh, came up with an idea about this project and I'm really grateful to be a part of this. It centers in the lives of a few women. There are many women in Latino American uh, social movements that I admire. Specifically in this video, I address idea by a woman from Chile from very early. Uh, century 19, Violeta Parra, and a journalist from Mexico, Lydia Cacho, that has been influential role model to me about what means activism and journalism and clearly uh, feminist working. And uh, myself, I write about borders and um, borderline identities all the time, uh, but also <coughs> lately, um, again, I had been in touch with very sad news about uh, murder and um, killings uh, of some young people and for me all the time to think in the pain of the mothers when children are assassinated um, in a very cruel and not natural ways of dying. Uh, it is important and so um, I'm honoring and thinking in those mothers too. Working with Women and Gender Studies and with Prof Professor Patricia was really interesting because her idea is not traditional. It's very unique because um, well, I have often like seen um, telling stories on like written paper or through documentary, but this particular project is very unique. It's a combination of both. So you get to see a text and also visually, it's very interesting. So uh, working with her, I learned a different approach and a different idea to tell stories and discover more ideas and experiment with those. I think now the world has become very globalized and very digitalized. People are consuming more information from um, YouTube and other uh, internet websites rather than like books and um, other journals and written information. So uh, it's easy to access, it's portable, it's, um, uh, and it's a great way it's a great resource uh, so uh, making video for me is telling stories and uh, how I came up with this video making with Patricia the story of three uh, courageous women is a great resource for people to get inspired and especially for women and gender studies um, department it's a great and lasting resource. Thanks to King State College that has a wonderful wonderful uh, faculty development grant program or project or initiative. Um, I apply for a faculty grant for this summer to develop these hybrid ideas 
on a video. When I grew the grant, I was imagining uh, clearly filming um, and New Hampshire during the spring summer, it's beautiful. So I was thinking to do a more uh, interaction also with, uh, with Fenagil as a student, like talking about our experiences being uh, multilingual people, being uh, multicultural persons, uh, being um, uh, sharing experiences about what it means to ask for a visa, being a student, uh, being depending also of migration policies, uh, etc. Because this, this, this is the experience of an international student or international person in the United States in general. And so during the spring break, March 2020, clearly uh, we were announced uh, that King State College will close and all the activities about teaching after spring break will be in no physical way. That means working remotely, working online. And I was like, okay, this will happen in two weeks, in one month. Uh, but March, April, May, June, we're in July, things had not changed about the context of the coronavirus in the world, in the United States, obviously. And so, yes, that affected my planning of how do the filming and respecting the social distance things. And so uh, at the beginning, I felt like a limitation, but later, I said, well, no, that is, that is exactly the multimedia tool. We can insert uh, music, we can insert words, we can insert images and, and so, but absolutely was more important taking care of each other, respecting the social distance things. It was really um, fruitful, I would say, because we had time, because of COVID, everything was shut down, so we had time. But more importantly, we also had idea. We knew what we were going to do and what, how much uh, time we need or what kind of precautions we had to apply. So um, we, really, uh, we really respected each other's uh, me like health and also we followed uh, public health guidelines. So it was basically utilizing this time in a fruitful way. So uh, Patricia, uh, tell us about the process of this project and how did you feel working together? Well, um, I wanted to take a moment um, to thank you for working with me and collaborating in this project. And also, uh, it is important to recognize to me what I learned from the other person, uh, vision of what I learned from the process. And so I have said that I admire your work, but also I perceive you as a very generous person. And so um, when I say generous, it's because um, I feel relaxed working with you and exposing my ideas to you. But also, um, I'm not expert making videos, but it's a lot of work. I'm totally aware, aware about the editing process. And so I was like, when I see her, and because you transmit me this peace and moving on, I said, I will not enter in this anxiety of the editing that purely has been more your work. So I appreciate that so much. And, and yes, it's what I, I appreciate from you and I see on you, uh, despite all the things that I have mentioned. Um, so I, I, I keep learning from you. Just keep going and, and not getting anxiety or frustration like, oh, this is not recording, <laughs> I forgot the camera. Yes. And so I, it, it, I, it is important that because it's the, the person, mm -hmm. but the technological, logistical, mm -hmm. um, and so that is great. Yeah. And uh, how have you integrated your multiculturalism 
um, in this college or in this project? Uh, well, first, here I would go like, uh, what did you consider you have learned? Oh, sure. So I think this project was really great learning opportunity because growing up, I never got opportunity to learn about these incredible women from across the globe who are courageous and who take stand for themselves and who are activists. Uh, I had really very limited knowledge about women, especially from Latin America, because we were never taught about those women in school or in high school. And uh, from this project, I learned about these three incredible women who uh, took risk, who are courageous, and who are really intelligent about what they do and how they have um, created impact in people's lives. And um, even though they do not look similar to women from my country or don't have same skin color or speak same languages, but the struggle of women is the same. They tell the same story uh, as women from my country, story of courage, story of um, resilience and story of uh, activism. So I think it was really great learning experience and I get this uh, woman and gender perspective in my work and in things that I uh, encounter in my day-to-day -day life because once when we were shooting you mentioned about this road which was really rough and tough and you said it is really gender uh, biased because only men walk in this path and I never looked like tangible things in that way so I think what maybe yeah. gave you this entire different perspective and it's a great learning opportunity. Great, thank you Najil. And, uh, and yes, I think that both of us agree uh, that we wanted to have something cultural mm -hmm. from our own cultures, like uh, in, in this case, the dress, yeah. your dress. And, and let me tell you that for me, uh, it's true, we have shared uh, the Multicultural Festival in Kiel, and I admire you so much, your natural dancing skills, and I, I just want to remark that. I want to remark that we came from cultures uh, where dancing and music connects uh, with personal and spiritual ways of living. And, and, and we have commented about uh, how spirituality is a way of living for us. But, um, but the reason also is like, uh, and thank you so much for saying that you have learned about these women in Latin America. And, and I think that for me, the reason because I wanted to work with you is because I know you're interested um, in issues of social justice and obviously gender, but also because you are a role model to me. And I, am, I know that we are different generations, different cultures, different ages, uh, at King State, I encounter or oh, we encounter each other, you as a student, myself as faculty. But I told you that I admire so much people that cross a border mm. because it, ca it has an emotional cost, right. it has an economical cost, it has a psychological cost right. because both of us uh, needed to go for a visa, which is a very stressful process. And, and in that sense, um, it's very important to me to honor our culture. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, even that it's very symbolic, and you have more, I want to learn now from you more. Mm -hmm. But you learn from, from Latin America. I can tell you quickly that, in fact, the dress that I have, yes, is a Mexican dress, yes. and it, it will be very typical in the center south of Mexico. And clearly, flowers, mm -hmm. Flowers are in all dresses in, in Mexican culture, and and so the, the colors are will be very. But of course, Mexico is huge, and so we, we will have a different dress yes. for each uh, state or the or each province mm -hmm. that we have. Right. And so, but in this case, uh, from you knowing that you are a role model for me, a strong woman <laughs> from your own country, and we will do the video about yes. the strong women from the past. Sure. Uh, the same way that we did from Latin America. Can you tell me, can you teach me yeah. a little about yeah. the outfit right now? Sure, uh, so right now I'm wearing this dress is from my ethnic group, 
We have um, 123, almost 123 different ethnic groups in Nepal and I belong to one of them. We are one of the indigenous people of Nepal and this is called Gunyu Choli. Yeah, and uh, this is Dhaka, which is um, uh, Nepali fabric and it's a kind of identity for mm -hmm. Nep Nepalese. And uh, right now I'm wearing this is called Silbambi. This is uh, like a national jewelry. Many people wear, many people from different ethnic cities and women from different uh, castes, they wear similar uh, ornament. And this is, we call it, um, um, this is a part of our Nepali dress. And um, many women, you know, uh, like I said, from different ethnic groups, different uh, caste, they wear similar um, jewelry. And uh, usually, gold is very considered um, very precious in our culture. So every most of the ornaments are made out of gold. It's gold plated, but <laughs> like it's gold, yeah, yeah. It will cost millions. <laughs> right, right. So yeah, and it, like gold has very good, like very, uh, you know, important significance in our culture because um, there is a saying that I think all people believe that if a, a, a son buys gold to uh, his mother or his uh, wife, he is considered successful. So there is a, you know, the, um, connection between success and gold, buying gold, which existed in our culture. Yeah, great. <laughs> and so talking about mothers, mm -hmm. Again, two women, different age, different nationalities, yeah. different cultural background, but all of, of all of us call our mothers practically mm -hmm. every day. Mm -hmm. So in this moment, if you call your mother, what you would say to her? How you greet her? Right. Uh, like you said, we call our mother every day, and I usually start saying like, uh, hi, hello, I say hi mom, but kigaru uh, is so which is like how are you um, dealing with lunch and how is COVID uh, situation in Nepal so that's how we that's how the basic conversation start and how about you yeah <laughs> well me too I, I call mama practically every yeah. day and I say hola mami como estas como amaneciste how did you yeah. start your day uh, Mm -hmm. uh, si ya comiste, que desayunaste, o que estás, uh, que estás almorzando, como va tu día, uh, mm -hmm. and that will say like, yes, the most important is we say, como amaneciste, that that means if you, you had a good night, good yes. sleeping, yes. and how you woke up, mm -hmm. if you woke up in good mood, or bad mood, and, and clearly, oh, have you had to launch, all right, and um, so how do you take your mom in your life? Because since we mentioned different courageous women, how do you take your mom in your life? Well, my mom is a courage woman, obviously, to me. Um, she raised seven kids by herself, and she's a very, very, very happy spirit, more than I. Mm -hmm. and she's very social and charismatic lady mm -hmm. and obviously uh, from her I have I, she was very clear with limits mm -hmm. <laughs> limits and discipline um, before than anything and but a lot of joy and I'm not a singer mm -hmm. but the singing that I have also comes from my mom my mother sings the whole day and what about you, your mom? Yeah, I think my mom is also uh, one of my role models. I learned about leadership from my mom, from my home, because she is, um, she is, so in Nepal, basically most of the economic sources uh, and the breadwinner of family is father. Mm -hmm. But in my case, my mom is the breadwinner of my family. And so I learned, uh, empowerment and leadership from her from a very early age and uh, like you said I also mm, she's my inspiration to uh, stand strong and um, courageous and she's very bold yet very kind and um, I think um, just like just coming to the US is a bold move and I think I got that 
uh, courage from my mom. Well, thank you. Thank you, Patsy. So, uh, when we were working together, mm -hmm. uh, I I do something mm -hmm. that it's true. I don't do with every punch, mm -hmm. but when people where I feel free to share about my culture, I I close. Yeah, I close, and so we are. We're not exactly close, so right. close in our video, <laughs> but uh, the most of our work together. Mm -hmm. So as I told you, I want to say thank you to the land, to thank Mother to the Earth that sustained us. Uh, thank you for whatever is the higher power for us. And clearly, thank you to your talent and <laughs> physical work, uh, working with me. Thank you so much. Namaste. Namaste. <laughs>